Hello. How are you all today? Just like that, February is here. And I hope you're all making good progress at your own pace and according to your own goals and vision. Just remember, run your own race. Run your own race. Don't focus on other people's races. Run, run your own as best as you can. Okay? And welcome to Unplugged. It's my pleasure to have you here with us again in um, February. Unplugged is a free-to-air broadcast initiative of Julia Jackson Consulting, where we focus on different brands, different business sectors in a very relaxed and hopefully entertaining and highly informative manner. You know. So thank you to everyone who's joined our Unplugged Facebook community between December and January 2022. We really do appreciate you. And now you can follow Unplugged and um, Julia Jazz Consulting on Facebook Live and Instagram. We're moving, we're moving. Gradually, we're moving. And we'll be opening up more channels for our broadcasts and um, other interactions that we plan to have with you as the year goes by. Now, remember to like, set your notifications, and go to our YouTube page. You know, there's loads of information there for growing brands, for newbies, and those who've been on the grind for a while. I mean, everybody needs support, don't we? So every Thursday, by the grace of God, this February, we are going to dig into the business and branding of the not-for-profit sector. There's so many questions around the not-for-profit sector. Maybe this is due to lack of information and misconceptions about this sector. And it's such a broad sector, and we'll most likely come back to it probably in the course of the year. Because as we started doing our research, we just discovered there's the not-for-profits that support other not-for-profits. And those are all kinds of people that we'd like to talk to and uh, share the information widely. We always say information knowledge is our currency in Julia Jacks Consulting, and we will continue to share that knowledge. Now, this month, what we've done, we've, we're bringing together founders and chief executives of not-for-profits who work with children from poor families, children and parents of children with specific special needs, not-for-profits who use the creative arts, theater, film, drama to address societal disorders and shift mindsets, and also a foundation that provides grants and other structural support for not-for-profits. And today, we will start the journey with my friend, my Aburu. This is Beauty Kumesine. I know she's going to pronounce, um, correct me on her name. She's the executive director of Blazing Heart Autism Center. Who is this lady from Portacot whose passion and hard work has taken her around the world? Well, here she is. Join me to welcome Beauty. Welcome, Beauty. Thank you. Uh, give me a minute to, to, to invite you on um, IG. We have, we have some people here. I, I'm, I don't see them normally, so I'm sure that they're, they're here for you. Your, your fan club is here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've sent you the invitation. Okay. Good to see you, Beauty. Good to see you too, Auntie Julia. Really has been a while. Really has been a while. Yes. So I'd like to read um, Beauty's bio. And this is a really potent version of the bio. I mean, we could go on for ages. We could probably take 30 minutes on her bio alone, you know. Now, Beauty. Is that, no, truly, I mean, when I looked at it, I said, like, mm, okay, we're going to collapse it a little bit. You guys, you know what? You can Google her and see. There, there is so much you can learn from what this lady has done with her, her life. Beauty is a fellow and an alum of Leap Africa, and she's the founding director of Blazing Hearts Autism Center and the Asbekum Foundation. Over... 14 years, Beauty has gained experience in managing children living with childhood developmental disorders, and in particular has honed her skill and knowledge 
on autism spectrum disorder and related disorders. Beauty is a passionate public speaker and advocates for the identification and rehabilitation of Nigerian children with special needs and other related developmental disorders. Through her efforts, several schools in River State and its environs have set up special needs units to provide inclusive educational settings for children with autism spectrum disorder and other additional needs. Beauty also consults for hospitals, for schools on how to manage children with special needs. And she has received local, national, and international certifications and recognitions. The most recent being one of the of Nigeria's 100 most inspiring women from Leading Ladies Africa. And also one of Nigeria's 50 most inspiring women under the Business Day Women's Hub publications. So, Beauty, it's an honor and a pleasure for me to have you on. Same here. Pleasure is all mine. We are going to send you a link now so you could um, invite um, some of your friends. So, please just check your, your phone and see. Or your I device. think I have it. Sorry? You have it already? Yeah, I have it already. Okay, okay, great. Okay. So welcome everyone um, who's joined us already and um, please have your questions ready for Beauty. We are going to go in. So Beauty, in researching you and all about what, what you do, you've been called many things, special needs consultant, special needs advocate, inclusion and diversity advocate, trainer what exactly do you wish to be known as all of this or more um i'm an open book as i would like to refer to myself so i would simply love to be known as a therapist okay. because that's what i do every day that's what I've been doing every day of my life for over 14 years now. Over 14 years. So I'd, I'd, I'd love to be called a therapist. It's easy for me to remember. It's also easy for, you know, people <laughs> to remember. So what do you do as a therapist? I cater to children with neurodiversities. So autism, Down syndrome, a little bit of cerebral palsy, learning disabilities, learning difficulties, communication difficulties. So I cater to them and I use um, different kinds of interventions for them. So what I do is therapy. And I also, on the side, do therapy for parents also. I'm actually very interested in that therapy for parents because um how do you how do you get to that point where you provide therapy for parents i can understand the physical one where you're, you're giving helping children giving them the tools how do you without letting out all your 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 information but how do you provide therapy considering that we live in an environment where where you say people are being uh, are getting therapy, it's like, oh, you know, how has that been for you? Um, so therapy for parents is actually the very first thing I, I, I love to do before diving into therapy for children. And the reason is simple. As parents, we're all adults. We need that, and, and, and then you come to beauty for, you know, help on your child. Your mind needs to be in place. Your mind needs to be at the right place so you're able to help or assist your child. So I take out time, maybe one day, maybe two days, maybe longer, to give therapy, give like talk to the parents, be in their spaces, let them know that there's help, 
there's hope for them and there's help for them also. Because um, once their minds are dented, once their minds are not in the good in a good place, you 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 see that parents start to say, "Oh, I want my child to speak in one in one week. Why is my child not speaking?" So we we need to first of all let them know that this is a process. This process might be longer than you expected, but we need your mind there. And that's the reason why at Blazing Heart Autism Center, we work hand in hand with our parents. All the parents that we work with, their children, we also work with them. So it's like a community, it's like, you know, a tribe, it's like a family. Nobody's left out, nobody's left out. So you graduated in human anatomy beauty. Yeah. And then you got another degree in education. First of all, why? I I wanted to be a doctor. Oh, okay. But yeah. then why why education? I, I know I can understand human anatomy, but why education? So um after human anatomy if this is like um, a journey to tell a little bit of my story. After human anatomy, um, I bumped into autism. Um, I was advised by a very good friend of mine to just read about autism. I think you, I think you have the heart to work with um, the, the children I work with. I think you have that. And I was like, Autism was something that we learned in, in can come back. Okay, we are back. Okay. okay, we're back. Yes. So, um, sorry about that. Yes. So, no, a friend of yours, yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine um, talked to me about autism and said he would love me to, you know, just read about what it was. And I was like, um, okay. We thought about autism in school, but that was just a one liner, you know. And then I was working in a software, I, I was, I left the health space and I went to the um, computer ICT space and I was training to be um, a software a developer and I was doing very well there and then that day when he came to the office to visit he was like um, I need you to do this I need to check and then when he left I was like oh okay let me just even for the heck of it read about it. And I read the first line, read the second line, read the next day, the next month, the next year, and I'm here. And you were okay. hooked. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was hooked. I was hooked. I was hooked because, now, it, it, it dawned on me that there were lots of people when I was growing up, there were lots of people that I knew, that I, I met, growing up that had a disability or the other even if it was not autism we didn't understand what it was you know and this these people I, I, looking back i can remember that they would leave school for some days and then the the the, the report was like ah where is this person and they went to church where is this person and they went to convention and in my head i was like why is my mom not taking me to church and to conventions on on days that i don't want to learn maths <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know what was happening you know but when i when i got into this i realized that it could be the reason why this classmates of mine were taken out of school to church or to prayers or something you know and then I, I told myself that I was going to make a difference. I was going to make a difference in the lives of children I will meet. 
I was going to make a difference in the lives of parents I will meet. And that, that was where my journey began. And um, you know that in Nigeria, we love paper. So I had to find a way yeah. to switch um, from the health sector to the education sector, which is correlated anyways. Because in, in, in the field where I found myself, um, as a consultant, as a therapist, as you know, what the books say I am, I need to have knowledge about how their, how their education works and also how their health management works. And so I'm not, I'm, I'm very happy that I, I did anatomy, but I'm glad that I stayed where, I have stayed where I am. I'm developing myself every day. So education is like everyday, you know, everyday personal development, everyday, um, yeah, personal development for me. For the health sectors, I, I, can, I, can quickly, I can quickly run to, you know, pediatricians and specialists in the health sector to say, okay, I have a challenge here. What do we do with this child? And uh, this child needs medication and all that and all that. What do we do? But for, for the general aspect of working with children with special needs, I have to be knowledgeable about what their education says and also um, what happens around their health. Those of us who have just joined in, those of our, our friends who have just joined in, I'm speaking with uh, Beauty Kusemi. Beauty is doing it. <laughs> it's okay. My husband is online and he's, he's watching you more than his name. <laughs> it's Kumesi. It's Kumesi. Kumesi. Yes. Ooh. Kumesi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kumesi. Okay. Kumesine. Okay, I'm so used to having Beauty K in my mind, but yes. <laughs> Mr. Kumesina, forgive me, please. <laughs> you know, forgive me. So, you're speaking with Beauty Kumesina, who is a therapist who works with um, children and parents of children who have, um, as she said, uh, is it neurodefective? People with um, autism spectrum disorder, Down syndrome, and a little bit of. Um, Neurodiversity, okay. Neurodiversity, okay. And, you know, when we when we started this um, thing, of working talking to people in the not for profits and then seeing how they're doing and what they're doing and how they're doing what they're doing, um, you came to mind very very strongly, but I really didn't realize how different you are when you came up with that topic. You know that. Not only, I mean, you were also a software, we trained to be a software program or designer. My goodness, how how did you bring, how have you brought this diversity of um, your background to what you're doing today? So how, how has it all come together? Um, well, I've actually left the software programming um, environment. I ran away from there because it was too many wires in my head, too many numbers. So I had to run. And I'm glad I, I ran to where my passion actually really lies. But um, I, I, I took away some knowledge about it. So I don't have issues or challenges with um, coming up with designs or how I want something to look or how I, you know. Yeah, so I, I, took, some, I took some information from the software developing to Blazing Heart. Are we off or I can't hear you, Auntie Julia? Okay. 
So when an audio I can kind of hear myself. You're not off. I can, I can hear you. Please consider if you can hear me on um, 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 Instagram. Please just say if you can hear. I can hear you. You can hear me. Oh, yes, I can hear you. Now. And I can hear everything you said. Okay, okay. So maybe I'll just move a bit closer. Okay. okay. Can someone on Facebook confirm that you can hear me? Someone on Instagram? Can you hear? Okay, I guess you're typing, but you can hear me. So I hope, you, I hope, the, okay, Ima can hear. Thank you, Ima. Thank you very much. Essien can hear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, George, thank you. So we are good. We are back. So it must have been a glitch. So I, I was saying that um, it's echoing. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to do that echo. I'm really sorry. Um, I hope it will not continue to echo. Technology is not my thing, but we're trying to conquer it. Miss Chills, I'm, I'm sorry. I hope it doesn't continue to echo. Okay. So... When you and I spoke about you being our guest on Unplugged, I made an assumption, which I think many people would make, that you came into this space because of your personal or family experience. But that's not the case, is it? No, that's not the case. I came into this space. So why, uh, apart from... Fine. Please yeah, try. I came into this into the special needs space. Um, because of my love for children. Uh, because growing up, I, I realized that there were a couple of children around me that, that found it difficult to communicate and we didn't know why. They found it difficult to associate, socialize and even learn. But we didn't know why, you know. So when I when I I told you about my friend that introduced me to um, the special needs space, when I started reading, and I realized, I said to myself that this is a virgin land in itself. I would love to explain to the world what these people that are unable to communicate like myself are saying. Because I just thought to myself, so I have lots of drama in my, in my head. I talk to myself a lot. So I, 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 I said to myself that if I can, I can just be their superhero, I can just tell you what is in their mind, you know, I think the world would be a better place. And basically that was how I started. Um, prior to now, I did not have any, I did not know anybody on the spectrum. I did not have any fa family member that I could say this person had a difficulty um, growing up. It, it was just um, people, you know, from my, school days, past experience, and then getting to read about it, I said I, I was going to try to be a voice for them. I wasn't going to try to heal them or cure them. I was just going to be a voice, their friend, somebody that can tell the world, hey, you can only come this far. You can't hit these ones behind. So, yeah, that was how my journey started. So you're going to be an intermediary. Yes. You're going to be their Voltron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah super girl, superhero. The super girl. Okay. I think that I think that's a great um thing to do considering that you didn't experience it personally. 
I mean, heaven knows that maybe maybe we've all experienced it one way or the other. You know, there's some people in our families we've said, oh, they're slow. You know, some people who have maybe learning difficulties. And I tell you, I didn't know what um, the autism spectrum was. I didn't even know there was a spectrum until I tell you no lie, I was in my 40s. Nobody should ask me how old I am right now, you know. But I had no idea. But it, it took a personal experience with somebody close to me for me to know that there was a spectrum, you know. And then, then I became a bit more aware of it. So um, I read I read some statistics, and I, there are some real statistics, and there might be some dodgy statistics. But let me share this one that I, I read because it was a bit alarming. It said, one in 50 people the world over, one in 50 children the world over are on the autism spectrum. Is, is this a fact? Um, that's according to CDC, right? That's according to CDC yes. because um, in Nigeria, we don't have, sadly, we don't have, a, 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 we don't have the numbers, we don't have um, a statistics um, that would say this number of children are on the spectrum. But I tell you, there are lots and lots of children on the spectrum. There are lots and lots of children on the spectrum. Most of these children are being hidden away because of um, social stigmatization, lack of understanding. Most of them are hidden away. But there are lots of children. That statistics is probably from the US. Because it was one in 59. Yes, it's from the US. Yeah, it was one in 59. Now it's one in 50. Um, we need to we need to work as a team to get the statistics in Nigeria so that we can say, but you know, because of um, the peculiarities in Nigeria, it's a little bit difficult to get the numbers. Uh, or to get a proper statistics in Nigeria. But we'll get there because we have a lot of um, people on the research end of um, working with neurodiversities. Okay, um, we have a question here. And please send in your questions um, from Isin. And it says, it's a wonderful thing you're doing, Beauty. Yeah, I think so. You're creating value. Many congratulations. Thank what you. cultural obstacles, if, if any, have you encountered? Um, cultural obstacles would be like um, cultural barriers and stuff, right? Yes. Um, so we, we, So I say we because I have a team of other professionals working alongside with me. Um, we have, we have, on a daily basis, we hit, meet different obstacles because um, not just cultural barriers, religious barriers, and that's that's really strong, very strong in in Nigeria. Um, cultural barriers that we have met. I'll give you an example of um, a child that the parents say, oh, you're not supposed to do this kind. So we're trying to potty train the child. And then the parents say, oh, you're not supposed to do, you're not supposed to touch my child in this manner or in that manner because our culture does not um, accept or it's it's not right coming from where he was coming from or where he's from and in my head i was like okay but we need to help this child the child has made progress in other various domains but we need to help this child on this and we cannot pass go past the, what we're doing we cannot jump it because this child needs mastery in this particular area. Went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then the parents said, oh, okay. So I'm going to, um, since we cannot have come to a common ground, I'm going to um, search for someone from my, search for a therapist from my tribe. 
and I respectfully said, it's okay. We're here any time, any day you, you feel like, but I will not cross your cultural lines. So we let the child go. And I'm sure that the child's making progress where, where they are. But there's this barrier that is too that is too mighty that we meet on a daily basis, the barrier of um, religious obstacles. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, yes. Yeah, religious obstacles. We meet Just that. Go ahead. We meet that on a daily basis. Um, where a parent comes to goes to church for counseling and then the pr priest or pastor or whoever is in charge says, oh, you need to bring your child for, for deliverance. And then they are trying to deliver this child by flogging the child or by pouring the child all sorts of manners of oil. And I'm sorry. I'm a Christian, but um, when I see these things, when I hear these things, it's um, it's really disheartening for me. The, the awareness needs to go beyond, and I keep saying this like every day and everywhere I go to, awareness needs to go beyond, I'm talking to you, Auntie Julia. You need to be, you need to be able to, tell the next person. You need to leave your comfort zone to be able to talk to a larger crowd. Awareness needs to go beyond the both of us having a conversation. And the reason why I, I keep saying awareness needs to go beyond that is because our pastors need to be aware what neurodiversities are. Our priests, our popes, our um, imams, the whole society needs to know what neurodiversities are so that they'll be able Babala to help was... them. Yes. If we can get them, yes. You know, and, and, and this has been really strong in my heart for about two, three years. Because during the lockdown, when we we're not having therapy, we we're having the the continuation. A couple, not 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 parents from Blazing Heart anyway, but in the autism community, the, there was there was news about people having to replicate the flogging, the beating, the pouring of all sorts of oils and rubbing the child the things that they do or that they were doing in the churches. So we need to, we need to speak to the religious leaders, Christian leaders, Muslim leaders, and Babalaos, if we can get them. Um, and let them, and let them tell us, because we are in the autism community, we are the ones that face the, the, challenges with these children on a daily basis yeah right so we want to we would love to know what they tell their congregation what they understand about neurodiversity so that's the reason why um this year blazing heart autism center is um creating awareness but our theme is faith and disability so we want to know what you know about faith and about disability. If you even think that there's a disability and not a spiritual attack. If you think that there's a, there's a disorder and not a spiritual attack, we want to know if you know to that extent. So yes, on a daily basis, we face religious obstacles, we face um, um, cultural obstacles and these obstacles now come together in the minds of parents. And so it feels like we're facing parental obstacles. Yeah. When we're supposed to be like, like a team, 
were hearing, oh, um, in Ife, there's a man that can cure my child. So I'm taking my child to Ife. In Adokiti, there's a man that can, there's a, a plant that I will boil and, my child will boil and drink and then my child will be cured. So we need to, we need to know, we need to hear from these people what they have been telling the parents. We need to know what they know about neurodiversities so that the world is going to be a better place for all of us, for the child, yeah. Yeah. for the young adult, for the adult, and for the parents. Okay, I've, I've put some information here up. Um, how you can it's follow and get more information. You can follow her. It's blazingheart.com. Did I get that? Did I get wrong? Yes. This is blazingheart.com on your website. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, let me let me just take that off. I, I, I'll correct it. But um, this is correct. The um, Faith and Disability Annual Breakfast. Is that a virtual or a hybrid or fully physical event it's fully physical but we're trying to do a hybrid okay we're trying to see okay. how we can get a hybrid so, event, but it's supposed to be fully physical with all the covid rules in place well i tell you in place yes all the place. i tell you i will do my best to to share, not that I will do my best, we'll share the information aggressively within our network and I will do my best to attend because um, I'd like, we've seen many people with disabilities and um, I, I have, I happen to also have experienced that with my mother who had a stroke and was disabled and we used to, she always wanted to go to church. And um, I tell you where I was living then was um, Lagos, and it was always easy for me to find somebody who would help me bring her. I could, I could get her into the, into the car, but bringing her out was difficult, you know. But I always could find one young man or two young men who would help her, you know. And then, um, but coming to Port Harcourt, and I'm, this is part of where the cultural obstacles may, 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 may come into play. I found out that... Um, my husband now had a stroke a little over a year ago and um, getting people to help, even knowing how to carry, even, even when you tell them, becomes a problem, you know. So I would like to, to be in that room to talk about it because these are all neurological disorders, uh, diversities, you know, you know, and yeah. how, and supporting families. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is that, ask is, at what point do you stop supporting the children? Because I have heard years ago, a colleague of mine had, um, this is not a friend of a friend, this is a real thing. A colleague of mine had a sister whose child, whose daughter was an extremely beautiful daughter, girl in her teens. And um, she was on the spectrum. She was the spectrum, you know. And um, at that time, she was also sexually aware of herself but not aware of herself in um, being able to, to create boundaries. So people were, were taking advantage of her. So at what point do you stop taking care of these children? At what point? Okay, um, for now, our age range is um, from two years to 12, 12 years. Okay. We had, we've had um, 14 years, we've had 11, we've had 27. But um, we, as a team, we do not stop therapy. What we do is we fade off support. We fade off physical, full prompt support. We fade it off so that we introduce independence. Okay. Because um, a child that is in um, primary six going to JS1, 
would have had, you know, self-realization or, you know, is aware of his or her environment. And there's the case of, there are the, you know, cases of bullying, um, stigmatization and all that. So we don't want the children to feel that way. And hence we, we reduce support or we fade off gradually. But for most parents, we still, you know, give support outside the school environment. We still give support outside the school environment. So we still ask questions. Um, what did he do today? How, how was he this week? Do you have any complaints? Do you think we can, we should come talk to him? Do you think we should, you, you know, we come up with different suggestions because we don't want the child to be left alone even if we're trying to build independence. So we, at Blessing Heart, we try as much as possible to start building independence early. From when we move the, from when we move the child to mainstream, from when we start mainstreaming, we try to start the um, creating independence because we don't want a situation whereby the child wants to, um, the child that is seven, wants to use the restroom and then he or she is waiting for you to clean them up. We try to, you know, get that in place before they move to mainstream. We don't want a situation whereby um, a child that is on the high end or high uh, um, um, area of the spectrum is throwing tantrums and is not able to self-regulate. So we, we teach them to self-regulate before they go in to mainstream. So we basically don't stop giving support. We only feed off physical, full physical support. So so that we are that's, not in your we are not in your faces yeah. every day. That that's like a, a, a mother bird tossing the children gradually out of the nest. Yes. So they can use their wings, develop their wings. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have two questions for you, Beauty, and um, I'll show you the first one. Said, Madam Beauty, I've always heard autism in pregnancy. Is this true, and what's the best way to prevent this? This is from Nchedu Isirima. It's not true. As much as I know, it's not caused by any drug, because the same drugs that one parent will take before and during pregnancy. Might be the same drug another parent, another mother will take before and during pregnancy. But it comes out that this child has autism or this child is uh, neurodiverse and this child is not neurodiverse. So it's not for now, there's no known cause. There are lots of speculations, but there's no known cause and hence, no known cure. So you cannot prevent autism. You can't prevent it. It's not, it's not malaria that you prevent by using mosquito nets. You can't prevent autism. Autism happens to the rich, the poor, the middle class, white, black, brown skin, anybody. It happens to anybody. People in the urban areas, people in the rural areas, people in the fishing ports, everywhere. People in the farms. It happens to everybody. It does not pick, it does not choose who it goes to. It happens to just anybody and everybody. So there's no known cause for autism and there's no known cure. I hope that answers the question. I hope so. If not, she, I'm sure she'll ask another question. We have another question. Um, are the local newspapers, publications, and possibly TV media helping to inform, educate, and create awareness in your work? Um, I would say yes. Um, and I would also say no. So um, for me, as a person, and for my team as Blazing Heart Autism Center, 
awareness is every day. Like awareness is every day and everywhere on the streets, in the cars, in the buses, everywhere, every day. But we've had uh, we've had a couple of nice publications, newspaper houses that have that had said, "Oh, okay, we're going to publish your your event, or we're going to publish this or that." But that I, I noticed that that happens only in April. Only in April. Um, because I think that people don't understand the reason why we should be talking about neurodiversities from January 1st to December 31st. People don't understand that. Because it can happen to you, it can happen to your neighbor's child, it can happen to anybody. You need to be aware. You need to have the knowledge so that you know that, oh, okay, this child that is throwing tantrums is not because the child is a, um, an obanji. It's because this child needs a little bit of adjustment in the environment. Maybe the light is too much. Maybe the sound is too much. We need to make adjustments. We need to understand. The public needs to understand. Our community needs to understand that autism awareness is not a one month or a one day affair. It's from January 1st. January 1st morning to December 31st night. Every day, night, around the clock. Okay, I'm I'm going to put something on your um, on your already loaded plate. I I am aware that there's a time when HIV AIDS was a big issue. I think it's still that thing may still be there. That there was a journalist against AIDS. You know, I mean, journalists they were put together and they were funded. They were funded to ensure that the HIV AIDS issue was on the front burner. You know, all, like you said, from the morning of January 1st to the night of midnight, um, December 31st. Uh, is it possible to engage with um, people who um, give grants in this area to, to so that it, it, it becomes an ongoing conversation, not an April conversation, you know? Because I think in Nigeria, cancer also has that. This this month is, I think, cancer general cancer awareness month, and then October, I think, is uh, breast cancer. So it's like it just comes up, and we wear the ribbon and we wear the colors, and then um, we feel we've done we've done well for humanity, but we actually haven't dug deep. But would that be an area you would be willing to collaborate with or seek funding for? Of course, of course, anything to let the world know that. Nigeria needs help, Africa needs help. Anything for my children, I will do it. I will. I, I, I will. I'll see what I'll see how I can work with you so that we can we can amplify this conversation. I at least just get you into the room and then you continue. I know you can you can you you're the voice, so let's see if there are any doors we can open. No problem. We have a question here from Joan, and she says, um, how do you manage the kids that can't talk from birth? Do they finally talk in later life? Joan, you asked her for therapy that you should go and see her for. <laughs> so, um, Joan, when you say did not talk from birth, what do you mean? What do you mean? Um, does it does a child does a child have um, a primary diagnosis already? Do you suspect that the child might be a neurodiverse child? There are lots of questions because I will not I I don't I don't I don't do this I don't tell parents that bring your child we can make your child talk never said that and never will when. When the child, we do our best to see that the child picks language, communication. Communication is, is, is a big deal for us. So that if, even if it, eventually the child is unable to speak, use their words, they are able to communicate, they are able to tell you, 
communicate with you non-verbally that, oh, okay, I'm afraid of this man or I'm afraid of this woman or, you know, communicate their needs, their wants, their anxieties, their fears, their happiness, their excitement. So we would, we're, we're big on communication. We, we try as much as possible to get the child to that point where they can use their, their words because that's what every parent would, wants. That's what we also want. But I will not be able to tell you that um, a child that, that didn't speak at birth will or will not speak later on in life because there are lots of things surrounding that. What's going on with the child? Why, why is the child not speaking? Why did the child not speak at birth? Is there a disorder or disability or any of that? You need to, John, you need to find out what the underlying issues are. Because um, that, the question is actually very broad. Very broad. It's broad, but I, I, I guess just, just so that we can move on another question. It, it's maybe a child has not what we believe to be on, 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 on air. I told you how I didn't talk for the longest time. I didn't walk. My mother told me this. I had no idea until about three years old. And um, she said she'd just see me just sitting down, just sitting. And she used to think, what's the matter with this child? But then at the time I was a, as a kid, Nobody thought about those spectrum or anything. It's like, well, this child is just lazy. And she said, one day she came in and there I was holding courts with myself, talking and walking around. And as soon as I saw her, I sat down. You know, <laughs> so, well, there are, different, there are different possibilities. I have no idea. I have no idea. But then we have, have um, so John, you need to be a little bit more focused on, on your... On question. Your, in your question, um, George asks, is there a national autistic society that you're aware of? Is there, is there one? Um, oh, nat national autism society. There is, in Nigeria, there is none. But there are different bodies. There are different associations that are fighting for the same cause in different places. But I, there's no known Nigerian National Autism Autistic Society. Unlike what we have outside the country, you have um, the National um, Autistic Society, you have this society, you have that society. Because we're still you know, wrapping our heads around what it is really, so I don't I don't think there is any body. There are different associations, there are different communities, but we'll get there. So parents have to actually do the homework and find out where can I get information from. We actually have a directory. But you know, there are lots of people that are springing up um on a daily basis. So the directory needs to be updated. But we have a directory where parents can go and you know, get help for their children. So for those who have access to um, the internet and stuff like that, um, Google may be a source of help, perhaps, you know, or um, yeah, I'll, well, let's leave it that. Someone asked, is there a center? Um, Chedo is in Port Harcourt, so she's asking, is there a center where an autistic child, or let's call it a child with neurodiversity, neurodiversity. Yes. Yeah, can be taken for, for therapy? Is there a center? I believe Blazing Heart has a center. And, I, I, was just going to ask, can... I was just going to ask if I can talk about Blazing Heart. Yes, you can. Yeah. You, you can, yes. So yes, to answer that question, yes, um, I will only talk about what I know. I will not talk about what I heard or what I perceive. Um, so there's Blazing Heart Autism Center, 
that caters to individuals with neurodiversities, with autism, the different, you know, classes or classifications of autism, mild, moderate, and severe, um, that takes, caters to learning disabilities and difficulties, communication difficulties and disabilities, um, sensory difficulties and disabilities. So to answer your question, um, Mr. Insirin, right? To answer your question, to answer your Mrs. <laughs> oh, sorry. To answer your question, Mrs. Insulin, there is Blazing Heart Autism Center. I don't know if I'm allowed to give the number, the organization's number, but I mean, all our, okay, you can you can call you can call Blazing Heart on zero eight zero two nine 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 eight 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 four. 0802999 Okay. Yeah. All right. It's there. So caters for people with neurodiversity. So we're we're almost we're four minutes out of our time. And um I'd Already? like to talk about something. Oh yes. You know, I told you it flies. <laughs> <laughs> flies yeah it, it flies you know so i'd like to talk about something that many people don't like to talk about and that is um the shame and stigmatization around children who are on who have who, are, who have neurodiversity you know and um i talk about this because there's there seems to be shame and stigmatization around everything people will not take um the, the vaccine i'm not i'm not a vaccine um how would I call it? I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but neither am I. I'm neither am I carrying the flag for them, you know. But I'm just saying that you catch COVID and people are like, oh, you caught, you got COVID. You have a stroke and you have a, this some kind of neurological disability, and it's like, ah, oh, somebody has their yeah, cerebral spinal some 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 difficulty or the other. Why is there such? Why are we so quick to label this thing? Where is the source of the shame? This is Where, the, the, source of, the source of this shame. The source of this How shame. To figure is, it out. We have not been able to figure it out, but the source of this shame is lack of awareness. Lack of awareness because you, as a person, you are not aware that this person with, with a neurodiversity can thrive. So if it's not the tall, dark, handsome, it's not normal. If it's not the child that can jump and play and ask you, mommy, I want to eat, that child is not normal. We need to educate ourselves. We need to, we need to, we need to be bold enough to stand for our children. We need to be bold enough to to, to tell the next person that, see, you need more education about my child. I am not apolo apologizing to you when, why my child is making noise. You need to know. There's, there's lots of social stigmatization, but it comes from within. It comes from within. Parents are, lots of parents I have met are ashamed, oh, I don't want my child to be on, I don't want anybody to come and do any research or anything on my child. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. How will that child thrive? What if the, the person that is coming in to observe or to, you know, write a story has the answer to the problem? We need to educate our minds. We need to demystify first our minds and then re-educate, unlearn what we have learned and relearn a new pattern just because of our children social stigmatization is not going to I think stop our sake. yes mm. yes social no, stigmatization is not going to, it's going to be, and it's increasing on a daily it's increasing on a daily and it's not just nigeria it's everywhere it's everywhere but the awareness is more outside than inside nigeria so I guess it would be like um, 
organizations like yours, businesses like yours, and um, having probably a convergence of yeah. all yeah. these different groups that work in this sector. So, so mm -hmm. there, there is a concerted message, one message that goes out. You know? Yes. Now, yes. Before I ask you a, a usual final question, because we, we've reached our one hour limit now. Now, structure, sustainability, and scaling. Those are three things that every business struggles with, whether in for profit or not for profit. How have you dealt with this? You've been doing this for almost 14 years now. And we're How still struggling. We're still struggling. We're still struggling. So, um, so because um, it's like my idea, a lot of times, and I'm working with a lot of people, a lot of times I try to break down um, instructions and say, okay, you handle this, you handle, I'm a very, I'm a very good multitasker. I can be here and then I'm doing one million and one things at the same time. But my team, needs to know that they are stakeholders in blazing heart they need to know that they can do this and if i don't give them a chance they are all brilliant people if i don't give them a chance we're not going to have the structure we want and that that's internal in, internally externally um we 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 source for help i'm not a business person i'm not a business person so I, I bring in, okay, the business experts to say, okay, this is what we're doing for the year. This is what, we, and then we sit down on the table and we talk about it. Sustainability, we, we, we try as much as possible to request as much as possible for funding for our different e events. Um, growth, we, we have tried to line up different growth paths for every staff, every member of Blazing Heart. So you're not from from financial growth to personal growth to you know organizational growth. We have lined up different aspects to see that that happens because nobody wants to be on a pedestal for too long, and the economy is really difficult. And so we are trying our best to see that we have funding as much as we can to carry a lot of um, activities. We want to do more. We want to do more than we're doing now, but we are constrained by lack of funds. Oh, I'm sure that when we, I, and I say when, because I don't say if, I say when, because I believe that there's a possibility of someone watching us to say, I'm sponsoring all your events for the year. That's going to take off a lot of, a lot of boarding from us. Yeah, well, even if it's just taking paying for your staff salaries and um, emoluments yeah. and training, that that would be that would free up money for other things. Yeah. Oh my! Oh yeah, be a lot. So we have this comment from George. Before I ask my final question, um, I think it also speaks, um, John, to um, to impart what you're saying. He says his brother is 36, is non-verbal autistic. His mom started this autism drive in Nigeria since 1993. And he's really so glad that many people are now trying to make, create a better space for people with um, neurodiversity. Thank you for sharing that, George. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Thank very you. much. Yes. And he says he's going to be reaching out to you. Yes, sure. you can reach out at uh, I am Beauty K. I'm going to just post that again on IG. Um, I am beauty. Okay. So, to round off everything, I mean, I, I could really stay on. I mean, I love my guests. They just they just bring it. They bring their A game, and I I know you're playing at the A game level all the time. <laughs> you know. So um, for not for profits generally because this month is our not-for-profit uh, month what, what four pieces of advice or questions would you ask them to ask themselves to make sure that they're just not being foiled by just passion but that they're looking at 
the business of not-for-profit, the branding of not-for-profits, the structuring and the sustainability? What, what questions or advice would you give? Um, I would like to ask the question, I would like them to ask the question, am I in the right um, space? When passion doesn't bring me my next meal, what do I do? So you have to be in the right place in your mind. And then I would lo also love to advise, take one day at a time, the business of non-profits. You're not making profits out of, out of it. I'm not making profit out of um, children with neurodiversities or parents with neurodiversities. This is not a business. You would have to know at the back of your mind that, okay, I'm separating. Even if you have business, I have two organizations and the both of them are not doing the same thing. The both of them are non-profits and it's for a reason, you know. Um, I, would, I would like to advise that they take one day at a time. It's not easy. Most times you break down. Most times you're, you're saying, I don't want to do this again. Let me go look for something else. But find your strength even in your weakness. And that strength in weakness is the one that always spurs you to do the next big thing. Don't always say, oh, okay, because I don't have funding. There are some people that have lots of funding for what they are doing. Know that that funding is not for you to buy a Gucci bag or you know, to buy Chanel, whatever. It's to make an impact in the, in the sites, in the community where you live. It's to make an impact for the people that you, have, you are drawn to, not for your personal use. So know where to draw the line. Live your life, be happy, live each day at a time. And just find happiness, find joy. Um, meet with like minds, attend programs, um, get mentorship, speak with different people, see what you're hearing. Don't take in everything like, oh, everything hook, like line and sinker. Save the information you're hearing so that you don't get confused. Talk to people when you feel that you're going down the drain and you can't, you can't find a way around it. Talk to people. Um, yeah. I hope that helps. Thank you. You're that that helps. Do you give them some really great, great advice that can be used whether you're in, in the for profit or not for profit? We do have other comments, and then um, I've seen you, Pagabi, but we have we, we try to keep to the one hour and you're almost 10 minutes over the hour. So um, maybe we'll we'll come back, ask Beauty to come back and answer. She wants to know the difference between a not for profit and a charity. So, um, Maybe you could uh, you could you could maybe, go maybe online and, and check. Yeah, send me a DM. Yeah, maybe I'll you could you me. could DM her, inbox her, and um, at uh, at Beauty K. I'm just going to put her her IG here again. Okay. Um. As I am Beauty K. That's on Instagram. So we can co continue this conversation off. Thank you very much. I'm going to um, shut down on Instagram for now. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, Beauty, what can I say? I'm just so grateful. You started off with a bang, and um, I'm sure it's going to it's going to go on this way. And I'm sure many of us are more more um, enlightened, more informed about. Um, the, um, I mean, for now, I know I'm not going to ca call it uh, neurological disorders. I'm going to call it neurodiversity. And having lived with, uh, with it at least twice in my lifetime, um, it, it gives me a different, a different sense, you know, of what to do. So thank you very much. A very illuminating, very interesting conversation. And um, 
if we do call on you again, please answer us. Sure. I, can, I think we have your flyer, so we, we are going to be, be sharing this up. And if you says, sure. please keep up the good work and um, God bless you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank Thank you for you. staying with us on this. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, bye. And bye. then we'll talk to you again. And definitely see you at the, at the, um, at the breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.